Hey folks, today I'm going to share a simple technique for being able to size your mask or helmets so that you don't end up with it being too big, too small. Very simple technique. So this technique can be used on Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer. A big shout out to Budwin for allowing me to use his models. Uh, they're really fantastic available on Maker World. I'll have the links in the description below. So to apply this technique, I'm going to be using Budwin's models of his head sizes. Now you don't have to print this. I just printed it for, uh, for fun. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to measure the circumference. We're going to take a measurement from side to side and from front to back. And I'm going to show you a really simple technique to do that. But you will need a flexible measuring tape and you will need a caliper and a link to that will be in the description below I'm gonna share with you on Bamboo Studio so let's go so I want to give you a preview of where we're going to be once we've made the adjustments to Budwin's head and Budwin's Deadpool mask all of Budwin's uh, sizing heads have dimensions on the back of it here and I like to use the circumference so you need to measure the circumference of your head and we're going to resize one of his heads to match yours you're going to do a dimension from side to side on your head and from front to back on your head and we're going to compare it to Budwin's head here we're going to use a few tools here we're going to use a positioning tool a rotation tool the cut tool and a measurement tool in order to be able to get this mass sized correctly and as you can see if you look at it I've split the mass perfectly in half you can see that the eyes are on the same level there's space for the nose there's space for the back of the head this looks a little close this looks a little close in my opinion but we could always remove a little material if we need to up the top here looks a little bit close as well you know so the thing is if you're a little bit too big you can always use insulation foam because you can get that in multiple different thicknesses but if you make it too small then you're gonna have a problem you need to go to Thingiverse and download Bund Widden's sizing heads here there will be a total of four then I'm coming over to Maker World and I'm going to use Budwin's Deadpool mask. So you have to find the model where it's completely assembled. So it's right down here. And then I'm choosing P1S because that's what I have. And then I'm going to open in Bamboo Studio. But you may want to download the 3MF or download the STL file depending upon the slicer that you're going to be using. The method I'm showing is good on Orca or Bamboo Studio. So the first thing you want to do is you want to import the head that is closest to yours. I'm just using the circumference that is 21.7 of Budwin's head. And don't worry about that gray zone that's up the top. It's outside the printing zone. So the very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to click the head. Then I want you to come up to the coordinates here. And I want you to put the X and the Y at 130. So don't worry about this red tag that's popped up. We're not printing anything. We're just sizing. So if your head does not match the circumference of this size head, what you're going to do is you're going to use this formula that I basically just grabbed from ChatGPT that tells you how to be able to calculate the head size and that it will output a percentage. You place your head size here and the current size there and you're going to either end up with a value that's going to be lower or higher than 100% or dead on if your head matches perfectly but you're going to click the sizing head and you're going to come up to the scale here and you're just going to enter that value there make sure that you got it set to uniform scale you select a value and you hit enter and it'll automatically resize the X, Y, and Z. For the moment, I'm just gonna stick with the 100, but I want you to know how to be able to do that. I wanna come back and double check. I'm still in the position that I want at 130, 130, and the Z doesn't matter, but just write it down just so 
as a reference to know where it is that you began. Now that you've resized it to match your head, just to have a reference as to the width and the length of your head, you come up and you grab the measuring tool. And this will allow you to be able to select points on the head to measure distances. Compare them to your measurements. You don't have to resize the head again. You can experiment if you want. But if you cross-reference to those values, you'll know is this head perfectly sized to yours? Is it a little bit smaller? Is it a little bit bigger? That's going to be an important point when we bring the mask in. So let's move on to bringing the mask into place. Okay, so now I've brought the Deadpool mask in, but now I want to position it. So I'm clicking it. So now I'm just going to turn it roughly to get it close. And now I'm going to type in zero degrees so that I have the mask and the helmet facing in the same direction so now I have the mask and the sizing head facing the same direction. Now I want to get them into the same coordinates. So I want the X and the Y to be at 130 to match the sizing head. So now I'm in pretty good shape. Of course, Budwin's head is up too high. So I'm just going to drop that down so that it's inside the mask. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slice the helmet in half. So I come up to the cut tool. Okay, so the cut plane is now horizontal and I want it vertical. So uh, I need to go to the Y to bring it upright. So I'm just going to type in 90 degrees. So now the cut plane is vertical. So now I'm going to perform the cut. Occasionally you will run into uh, Bamboo Studio wanting to repair the model. And it can take a little bit of time, so you just need to be patient. All right, so now it has sliced the mask in half, but it's out of position. So just click anywhere outside of this little box that it forms around it. Close this red square, click outside. All right, now what we're going to do is this half of the mask, we're just going to delete it to get it out of the way. Now I have half the mask, and I want to get it back into position to be able to compare it. So I need to change this value to 130. It has now put the mask back. So we've got it on the side. We look out the front here and I can see that the sizing head is too low. We're not going to be able to judge properly that the mask is the right size. So I have to click the sizing head. I'm going to grab the blue and I can rough it up if I want. But I can also look at it and go like, hmm, boy, I got awfully close there. But I come up here and I can enter a value of 105. And I go, I look at the eyes and I go, okay, they look really well aligned. I turn over here. There's lots of size. Uh, there's lots of space for the nose. The back of the head, that seems to be all right. The top of the head, that looks close for me. That, you know, I would dare raise the size of the mask by 1% just to give a little bit of clearance and then like I said there's insulating foam where they have one inch strips with an adhesive back that you can put on the inside of the helmet to be able to get the spacing right for your eyes likely that little bit of foam strips that you might put in there will make it more comfortable to wear if you feel the need to resize the a helmet because you feel like it might be a little bit too close. All you have to do is come over, select it, go to the scale here and change it to, in this case I changed it to 101%. I come over, I look and I go like, okay, my eyes are well aligned. Eh, well, maybe the, the head's a little bit low now. I can see the arc there. One of the other things you can do is you can come over to the objects here and you can always turn off and uh, turn there you see so now you can really see where the eye is and you could go and you could say oh you know what I'm going to raise the head a little bit so maybe it's 106 and wow that looks like really really right on there's lots of space up the top space around the side once you know what your percentage is now you can go and download the model and uh, 
resize it in because this one prints in pieces you can resize it if this was helpful or you have any questions or concerns just leave them in the comments in the meantime Here's some techniques on how to be able to insert magnets without getting glue on your hands or without mixing up polarity of magnets and ending up having to dig magnets out. So watch this video next.